Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the rousing Rudolph Frimmel operetta, The Three Musketeers, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marlon Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're going back to the swashbuckling days of Louis XIII. Dorothy Warren shoulders the lovely lady-in-waiting, Constance. My name is D'Artagnan, and, well, may I present... Monsieur Portos. At your service. Monsieur Athos. Monsieur et madame. Monsieur Aramis. Your humble servant. You know who we are? We are the musketeers. Oh, fancy musketeers. Stout, comrade right musketeers. Side by side, two and side. We've come for years and years. No folk can hide us here. When faced by musketeers, he wisely disappears. War and daring, we are ever sharing. Strangers to danger, indeed. To kiss a maid or sack a town Or ride a foeman down And one for all and all for one We stand up all united And we are the musketeers Oh, fancy musketeers Stop, all my musketeers Come on, may stand up all All for one Well, it all began when I first came to Paris, a very young recruit from Gascony. And I stumbled right on to the three musketeers. <laughs> well, trust Porthos. How can such a fat man duel so magnificent? Are we not musketeers? And what is a musketeer's duty? To fight, to love, to live. And the devil take Richelieu's guard. If we do not take them first. <laughs> <laughs> ah, musketeers. Lady Constance. My dear friend. Athos the melancholy, Porthos the portly one with such a large heart. And such a large tummy to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> and Aramis the heartbreaker. Dear Constance, you must choose one of us. Tell us, what kind of man do you wish to marry? What kind of man? Someone attractive, gallant and active, daring, forbearing. She's thinking of me. Modest. Magnetic, dashing, so easy. Clearly, she loves me sincerely. Somebody wise, but not too cynical. High up for a pinnacle. I shall place him all his life to be. Attractive, and I am 
eyes, but not too cynical. I afford a feeling I shall play through all your life to be. He'll be my child. And we shall fight for you to be the he. Indeed, we shall fight. Stop, gentlemen. Stop, please, I beg you. Could you not fight among yourselves? The lady ordered you to stop. Uh, Idiot, you've knocked the very blade from my hand. And you walked on my feet. And ripped my cape. Who are you that you dare to stumble on us like that? My name is D'Artagnan, and I am from Gascony, sir. And I have come to Paris to become a musketeer. Young Sprout, I challenge you to a duel. And I accept. Behind the Luxembourg at noon. Agreed. Sir, you have equally insulted me. I also challenge you to a duel. Behind the Luxembourg at one. He won't be alive to be prison. As for me, you've insulted both my feet and me. Behind the Luxembourg, sir, at two. Very convenient. It is where I live. Good. It is where you will die. Come, musketeers, to your duties. Imagine. Oh, monsieur, they are the musketeers. The best swordsmen in France. The second best. But thank you for your concern, Mistress... Uh, Constance. A lovely name for a lovely girl. Do, do I detect a, a flair for romance? Ah, yes. I am not only the greatest swordsman in France, but the greatest lover. <laughs> you are not the most modest man in France, monsieur. I have been taught to speak frankly. Mistress Constance in Gascony, when we see a girl who is more beautiful than any we've ever seen before, uh, we do this. We take her hand. Yes. Look into her eyes. Yes. And say, Marbel, Marbel, you are so charming. I'm enchanted with you, Marbel, Marbel. Your eyes are daring me and thrilling. Every smile invites me all the while With every look surprising, tantalizing Whispering will wake me, come and take me My bell, my bell, forever I shall stay beneath spell I'll be my whole life through adoring you more Tell me where and, and when. Oh, monsieur, you must not duel the three musketeers. They will kill you. I am honored at your concern. But there are only two things I wish in life. The love of a good woman and the chance to become one of the king's musketeers. Only by proving I am their equal can I become one of them. Well, our young... 
young friend is waiting. We'll take you on, Sprout, one at a time. No. Why not let me fight all three of you at once? Sir, you're a brave young man, and if you survive my sword, I shall be most happy to make your acquaintance. Thank you. Monsieur Portos, you are first. Boy, I like your spirit. What a pity I have to annihilate you. On guard. Stop! Why are you to stop dueling in the name of his eminence, Richard? If I see you, I'd be gone. And take those red-coated dummies with you. You insult my men. We challenge you. Just a moment, Josac. Surely even you wouldn't attack three men with your five. There are four of you. This young Gascon, he's no musketeer. I feel like a musketeer. Retire, young Sprout, and save your skin. I'd rather stay and puncture Monsieur Jusac's. Very well, Jusac. It's three and a half to five. On guard! Musketeers, let's serenade them with our motto as they die. <laughs> of us for and all we reckon as our fear in peace in war there never was a core that didn't bow before the musketeers united of to become your friend. And I. And I. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thanks be to heaven you are still alive. What's this? Constance, you never showed such concern for us. Oh, you're not dead, Monsieur D'Artagnan. My eyes are still open, and they seem to be looking only at you. most beautiful girl in France loves me. Oh, how can I fail? All I wish in life now is to become a musketeer. Well, perhaps one day you shall wear our uniform. May we say there is hope. On hope a man lives. I've read history. I've heard tales of brave men. But none were like the musketeers. In days of yore a score of heroes there have been with quite a claim to name and fame. And the tale is mine, and in a fight. At 
long and song with fervent admiration poets have extolled their doings bold. Very long, so we're told, were those men of bold. And yet, one and all, they seem small. Do these men of whom one hears? True for you, true for you, true for you. Face beside the king's own musketeers. We are the musketeers. Oh, dashing musketeers. Stout comrade musketeers. Bound to ride side by side. Why should an important railroad research center spend endless hours studying a simple object like a box or a bag? The answer is that not only do the railroads provide the basic transportation needed to bring you most everything you use in your daily life, but they are also vitally concerned with seeing that those things arrive safely and in good condition. So the study of crates and other shipping containers is an essential part of modern railroading. Fact is, the railroad men and shippers of America, whose endless hard work and ingenuity have paid off in constantly improved shipping methods, are never satisfied, never ready to relax their efforts to bring you still better service. And so it is that April is known in the railroad and shipping industries as Perfect Shipping Month. The 25,000 shipper members of the 13 regional shippers' advisory boards and the National Association of these boards join with America's railroads to emphasize proper methods of packing, sealing, and marking containers, seeing that they're properly loaded and braced in railroad freight cars, and finally seeing that they get a smooth, damage-free ride. During the coming month, every member of the team will rededicate himself to the importance of safe shipping, careful handling, and safe delivery of America's freight. For nothing must be allowed to slow or hinder the flow of America's production, both for commerce and defense. And America's railroads and shippers together are hard at work to protect that productive output from start to finish. Now, here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Rudolph Rimmel's The Three Musketeers, starring Gordon McRae as D'Artagnan and Dorothy Warrenshold as the lovely Constance. Listen to me, musketeers. My lady, the queen is in great danger. We live to serve her. Tell us what we can do. Richelieu has discovered letters of the queen's in England. Oh, letters such as any girl writes when she's young. But the queen is a woman now. She loves France. She loves the king. Then what value have the letters? Richelieu plans to use them to split the royal family, to split all of France and thus come to power himself. One of us will go to England. We will get the letters and destroy them. Richelieu's guards wait like rats at the wharves. Any of you who try to leave France will be killed. Richelieu does not know my face. Not yet. No, D'Artagnan. I will go alone. No, not alone. My oldest friend will go with me. My sword will clear my way. My sword will make them pay. Who's afraid or who will pay? 
face a blade that brings you blood, death, and judgment day. Who dares my will defy? Rats, you rabble, here is my reply. We stand alone, we can defend my own. We live to fight, love, my sword and I. Who dares my will defy? Rats, you rabble, here is my reply. We stand alone, we can defend my own. We live to fight, love. danger for you here, my lady Constance. If Richard knows you plot against him... We must each go down dangerous paths, dear friend. I shall remember the look in your eyes, and, and that memory will make me brave. The look in your eyes, dear Constance, will make me invincible. Though the path that I must tread is full of dread and dark and Spotted Calais and raced him back here in the fastest carriage. We thought there might be uh, somebody waiting. Mistress Constance, may I report that the work is accomplished. The deed is done. Her Majesty the Queen is safe. Musketeers, about face. This young sprout has some more work to do. Marbell, Marbell. <laughs> Rise, Monsieur D'Artagnan. We've heard from our musketeers of your service to our country. They asked that we appoint you a musketeer, but uh, tell us, young man, in what manner did you serve us in France? Careful what you say, lad. It was a question of of love, Your Majesty. Love? Of one of the Queen's ladies, Mademoiselle Constance. Ah, he's a diplomat as well as a swordsman. But I am afraid, sire, she will not have me unless I am a member of the great camaraderie. A fourth musketeer. 
Kneel. Kneel, Monsieur D'Artagnan. Your Majesty. I, Louis, King of France, appoint you, D'Artagnan, one of our musketeers, to love, to live, to fight for France. Your Majesty, I serve you with my life. And Mademoiselle Constance, I serve forever. Gentlemen, the Lady Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to the other members of our cast, Francis X. Bushman, Bill Conrad, Ted DeCorsia, William Johnstone, Carlton Young, and to our entire company. Three Musketeers with book by William Anthony McGuire, lyrics by P.G. Roadhouse and Clifford Gray, and music by Rudolph Frimmel, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Today, with spring more than a week old, many of us are starting to think seriously about summer vacation. It's the one big opportunity of the year for most of us to really throw off our workaday worries, relax, enjoy a complete change of pace, and see new things, new places in this wide and wonderful country of ours. That's why I remind you now that the best way to make the most of your vacation is to travel to the vacation spot of your choice by train. That way, your vacation starts the minute the conductor cries, All aboard! You travel safely, comfortably, dependably while the panorama of America unfolds before your eyes, and you arrive fresh, rested, and ready for the time of your life. This year, leave the work and worry of travel behind and travel by train. You'll be glad you did. Thank you, Marvin. Now, folks, here is our gifted leading lady, Miss Dorothy Warren. Show. Oh, you are a very constant Constance, as usual, Dorothy. <laughs> I never realized what a demon you are with a sword, Gordon. You were re a real cut-up, weren't well, you? Well, it's, <laughs> it's easy to fight a duel on the radio, Dorothy. You uh, just got to have a sharp sound man like our own Bud Tollison around. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's the show trend bound for uh, next week? Well, you give a listen. Here's a little hint. Carmen? <laughs> Ah, uh, and another Railroad Hour first, Dorothy. Me Benzel will be with us, and we'll be turning next Monday night into a, a great day. I'll be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. See you real soon. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and great day, my guest, Mimi Benzel, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> The Three Musketeers was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can currently be seen starring in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. And reminding you, this is National Boys Club Week, a welcome occasion for all of us to salute the men and women who are giving unselfishly of their time and money to help build the citizens of tomorrow, to help today's youngsters to become useful, intelligent citizens. And now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Hear the voice of